The room he died in covered up because it's right behind that. Because I think it was uh, 309. No, I think the digits added up to nine. So I think it was 306. Right. Oh, you think that's it? Yeah, the I think black. it's over there, because I remember, okay. remember we came. It's right there, because that's where they all pointed. Right, because we came out of the... Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, King Kong Consciousness, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. Y'all see where I'm at right now, right? Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Canadian Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Australian Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my South Pacific Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Caribbean Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my South American Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Central American Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my American Africans, my Memphis Africans, my Knoxville Africans, my Chattanooga Africans, my Nashville Africans. I'm here, brothers and sisters. On this day, 55 years ago, on this day, 55 years ago, on this day, 55 years ago, the last great leader of black America to give us a comprehensive program and plan for political, economic, and social change was assassinated on this spot 55 years ago. The great reverend is 307. Okay, the invaders, 307. So, so brothers and sisters, we here to pay homage to Dr. King on the day we lost him 55 years ago, Divine Lorraine Hotel. I'm going to be hanging out here for about an hour, brothers and sisters. So my Memphis Africans, if you need to come holler at me, I'm here. If you're in Memphis right now, you want to come holler at the Prince, I'll be here for a hot minute. I'm going to go inside the museum. They got a special exhibit going on, but I just wanted to be here because I've never made it here on the day Dr. King died. Y'all, this is the first time I've been to this museum on this day. I've been to the museum, but never on this day. Dr. King was murdered, murdered on the governmental orders of the president, the FBI, the CIA, with participation from the Tennessee KKK, Memphis Police Department, Memphis Fire Department. Y'all know Dr. King was not even supposed to stay in this hotel. Dr. King was not even supposed to stay at the Lorraine Hotel, but he was being criticized by black people for staying at the Holiday Inn. He was being criticized by black people for staying at the Holiday Inn, so they switched the hotel. And then after they switched the hotel, somebody from the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in Atlanta, someone from the SCLC office called and asked them to move his room from the basement floor, the ground floor, to the second floor. There's only two floors here. There's only two floors here. They moved his room from the bottom to the top so they would get a better shot, brothers and sisters. And then Dr. King survived the shot. He got to the, ho to the hospital. They took him to the hospital and he was suffocated to death at the hospital, brothers and sisters. Never forget Dr. King. Dr. King was born in a very uh, successful middle class family. His father, Daddy King, successful pastor. He did not have to give his life for African people. Dr. King did not have to give his life for, to African people. He could have went and been a T.D. Jakes. He could have went and been a Creflo Dollar. He could have been a megachurch minister. This man had a doctorate degree, seminary degree, came from a family that was comfortable, at least according to the standards of that day for black people. He didn't have to turn all that away. We talk about Guatemala Buddha giving up his royalty. Dr. King is a modern day Buddha, a modern day black Buddha. He gave up all he could have been to sacrifice for African people, brothers and sisters. I want to see that. What, what, what room y'all said it was? The black one. I'm going to show y'all the room, brothers and sisters. We on ground zero. Three oh six. I was. It's three oh six. So I'm gonna show y'all one time. If y'all can see that, y'all see that black up there? Can y'all see that black hanging? That's room three oh six. Y'all see that black? That's where Dr. King was assassinated right there. He was not murdered by James Earl Ray, brothers and sisters. James Earl Ray did not murder Dr. King. Dr. King was murdered by a sharpshooter from the Memphis Police Department on the strict orders of J. Edgar Hoover, the CIA, 
the President of the United States. The Memphis Police Department killed Dr. King, not J. Edgar Hoover. I need y'all to understand that. I need y'all to understand that. That's where Dr. King took his last breath. Room 306, brothers and sisters. If you've never been to the National Civil Rights Museum, you need to come. It's my second favorite museum after the Great Blacks and Wax Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. So we're here to pay respects to the last great leader we had to give us a plan. We got a lot of leaders giving us a bunch of talk, but we don't have no leaders leading us anywhere. They're just talking, no walking. Dr. King was not a talker. He was an activist, a revolutionary, a scholar. He gave his life to African people. He said he, we may not, he may not get there with us, but we as a people will get to the promised land. Brothers and sisters, it's up to us 55 years later, and we are not showing Dr. King the respect he deserves. We are not keeping the dream alive the way that we should have. Dr. King died for economic justice. He did not die for desegregation. He did not die for integration. He did not die because he had a dream. Dr. King died in Memphis because they could not let him come to Washington, D.C. to lead the breadbasket campaign. That was his next stop, D.C. He died in Memphis, so he would never get to D.C. Dr. King was bringing poor people from all over the country to D.C. They were going to erect a tent city and nobody was leaving until everybody had a house and a job. Economic revolution. Dr. King was going to force America into a radical redistribution of America's wealth. And that's why he was murdered for economic justice. And we still cry for economic justice. We still fight for economic justice. But as a people who waste two trillion dollars every year, we got to look in the mirror, too, brothers and sisters. This is not all about the U.S. government. We spend $30 billion on fake hair. We spend $2 billion on Air Jordans. We spend $800 on poor meat. We spend $20 million on children's cologne. $2 billion on video games. Why well, somebody calling me when I'm live? I hate when they do that. So, brothers and sisters, I just want to let y'all know I'm here. Honoring Dr. King is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. Dr. Umar Johnson and the struggle continues. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Right, right. Let me close this out. I just ask that you fulfill two requirements if you're going to send me a resume. Two requirements. Because you are going to be role models at the school, so two requirements. Number one, you cannot be sexually confused. You can practice your freedom somewhere the hell else, but not at my school. It ain't that type of party. No floating, no showboat. Number two, your husband, your wife, your partner, your mate, whatever you want to call them, better look like your mother or your father or stay the hell away from me. I do not support interracial marriage. I do not ascribe to that foolishness. How the hell are you going to be a teacher of black boys married to a white woman? It ain't that type of part. Stay your ass in Sacramento. Be multicultural in Sacramento. But you come to the FDMG Academy, we are 100% unapologetically African.